So at the bottom of the graph, we have pH. And on both sides, we have percent of hypochlorous acid on the left and percent hypochlorite on the right. And then we have these two uh, lines in the middle to represent temperature. Well, we're going to look at the 20 degrees Celsius temperature line. And we're going to see what happens when the pH of the water is 8. Now, a pH of 8 is typical for water systems. So at a pH of 8, we see that 20% of the chlorine is in the form of hypochlorous acid, and 80% is in the form of hypochlorite. So what that tells us is that most of our chlorine is in the weaker form at a pH of 8. And again, a pH of 8 is typical of many distribution systems. They operate there for corrosion control purposes. Well, as we lower the pH to 7, we can see a dramatic impact on the distribution of chlorine species. At a pH of 7, 70% 70 of our chlorine is in the form of hypochlorous acid, and only 30% is in the form of hypochlorite. And something worth remembering is that 5.5, at a pH of 5.5, 100% of your chlorine is in the form of hypochlorous acid. So as you lower your pH, you don't need to go beyond 5.5. Now, the problem with this is pH of 5.5 creates a corrosive water. So like we said before, for corrosion control purposes, most systems will operate uh, at a pH in the 8 range to prevent corrosion in the distribution system. However, for the initial contact time, many plants will reduce the pH in the chlorine contact basin to get a good uh, inactivation of the bacteria and then raise the pH prior to sending the water to the distribution system, again for corrosion control. So this demonstrates the effect of pH on that equilibrium between hypochlorous acid and hypochlorite.